everyone, this is Paul from The Outdoor Adventure. Today I'm going to be building a high efficiency wood gasifier backpacking stove. Um, there's many people that make them and, and sell them professionally, but they're very cheap and easy to make on your own and are a good alternative for longer trips or trips where there's an abundance of, of wood and you don't want to carry the extra fuel with you. So let's look at what we're going to need. We'll need two cans. This is a four inch uh, diameter um, peach can. And this is a three inch diameter can. This is a bean can. You're going to need two drill bits. One of them eighth of an inch, the other three eighths of an inch. A ruler, something to cut. I've got a pair of tin snips, a cheap pair of tin snips. Something to punch a hole. And I've got a, uh, a small file here and that's pretty much it besides the drill. Oh and one thing more of course you're going to need a can opener. Let's start then with the the larger can. Your first step is going to be using your can opener to take off the lid of the can. Now you want the rim attached to the lid so that means that you're going to need to take your can opener and cut from the side and that's going to leave you in your top rim intact and you're going to need that because you're going to be placing and attaching the smaller can to this larger can. Here's an example of what the finished stove is without the exterior drill holes and inside you've got this other can. Now when you've got your lid of your can detached you want to take you're going to want to take this can and, and mark around the edge of it. Now as you can see here the can doesn't fit exactly in one of the ridges from the top but put the lid upside down and this can fits perfectly inside this rim so I'll score this mark around here and the better you score it the easier it is going to be to use it as a guide And then what I'll do is I'll punch, punch a couple holes. Now with all those holes you can keep making more or you can use your tin snips to start your, cutting your way around there. So there's your, your finished ring. Now if you find that your can has a bit of trouble fitting in there, uh, it's good to have a good seal, but you can take the side of your, your tin snips or a file or whatever and push it along that rim and that's going to get a nice smooth rounded surface make it easier to push the, the inside can into there. Alright so I've got this done and if you'll notice this is upside down and the added benefit of having it upside down is that it's going to fit snugly right on top there as you can see it doesn't come off. Alright um, before you slide your can in there for good, you're going to want to drill some holes. So let's let's start drilling. Let's start with the outside can. All your airflow is going to come from the bottom of this can, and we're going to make two rows of holes, and they're going to feed the bottom of the inside can and the top. We'll explain the purpose of the second row of holes in a minute. So what I've done now is I've punched eight holes all the way around the bottom of this can and I'm going to punch another eight offset about this height here. There's the two rows of holes offset as you can see and the next thing to do is drill them with the 3 8 inch drill bit. Now before I go and do all the drilling I'm going to also mark my um, holes in the inner can, the 3 inch diameter can and all your holes work around in a circle. You're going to want about 16 holes and they're going to be three quarters of an inch down from the top. And again evenly spaced. I find it easiest to start by working on the four extreme sides and then 
mark the holes halfway between each of those and that will give you 8 and then in between those again should give you 16. Finally, you'll want to drill the holes in the bottom of the 3 inch, the, the inner can. And what I've done on the other can is to make a concentric ring all the way around the outside and keep working your way in and this is going to allow lots of airflow to come in the bottom. Unlike other fires, you're going to light the thing from the top and all the airflow is going to come up from the bottom and the sides to keep it running. It's, it's a nice easy design. Also on the sides, you're going to need to drill a set of holes. I've got eight here around um, the bottom and then a second row of four. Here we have the finished inner can. You've got this ring of jets here and these holes at the bottom, the larger 3 8 inch holes here. And I didn't actually even use the 8 inch bit for the sides. I just used this punch, this file that I have. For the bottom, I used the 8 inch as well to make a series of holes. Now, this upper ring here is actually going to inject hot air in the top. So, normally in a stove you get the, the heat coming from the, the sides of the fire, or the top of the fire, and there's a lot of unburnt gases at the top. Um, and that's why they have afterburners, they have high efficiency wood stoves for your houses nowadays. Well, this is essentially the same thing, but a lot more compact. You're adding more hot air right at the top, and, and you'll see later, and I'll put a little video over here at the side, of the uh, the jets and the flames coming actually from these points in the stove um, more than anywhere else. So let's put it together now. You take your ring, you slide it over the holes, and now it's better to have it rest right about here, just above those holes. So here's this finished stove. I poked those four holes in the side and they're making it so that this doesn't move at all. What I also did is I crimped in the edges of the can and because this lid is upside down it acts as a seal to hold the stove together. There you go. You can pick it up by the top rim. So here's our stove. My daughter's out here to help us so if you hear any noise in the background that will be her. It doesn't take much fuel. Small wood about this, the width of a pencil and you just take that and you fill up the stove first. All right. And once the stove is full, you can worry about lighting it. So. All right, so now we've got the stove loaded and we just need to, to light it. So you get your kindling and you put that on top. Yeah, so your tinder and you put that on top. And fill it in. And then you have a small pile that you're gonna, of, of tinder kindling that you're gonna use to, to get the fire going. And it's gonna burn down. I'm just going to light it from the top, give it a, a minute or so to ignite. And once this is going and once this is uh, burning properly, you're not going to need to add any more fuel at all during the process. And once it's started going, yeah, look at that, sweetheart. And once it's going properly, we'll put the stove on top. Our fire is ready to go, and I put the pot stand on. Just gonna be very careful, right, sweetie? All right, now let's go. Timer on. So at eight minutes, it was starting to boil, and now it's a bit after that. So why would you use this stove? Well, if you're taking a trip of more than three days, you're fuel weight is going to be a lot more using a, an alcohol stove but with something like this you can pick up your fuel wherever you go. The one thing you have to consider is what are the park regulations. There are parks that don't allow you to have open fires and there are those that don't allow you to bring or use the, um, the wood from the surrounding area. If so, better take the alcohol stove than this but if the rules are okay then this is a good alternative it takes a bit longer than your regular stoves your alcohol stoves it's on par with some of the other um, uh, canister stoves that I've seen because of that it's a good alternative mm -hmm.